Hey, Gregory High School here with uh, Dr. Archer. Uh, we had the pleasure of having her on campus today. Uh, she walked around with some administrators around the district, uh, gave us some great uh, feedback on how to improve instruction on our sites. And so we had some conversations during break uh, about some common formative assessments. I know that's what we're working on. Mm -hmm. So uh, just going to have her kind of uh, relay some information, maybe some um, knowledge she has, some information of research that, that might help us uh, go to the next level on um, using the common formative assessments and now what uh, to improve instruction. So uh, Dr. Archer, can you kind of maybe discuss uh, common formative assessments, how important they are, uh, what teachers can do uh, to, to kind of change their instruction based on those? So uh, common form of assessments means that the English teachers, the science teachers, the math teachers would get together as you're doing uh, and they would say here's what we want the students to learn and would write an assessment to go with them. The best book on this, uh, which has many high school examples, is Embedded Formative Assessment. That's the title uh, by Dylan William. Uh, and um, so then we do this math assessment, we come to our PLCs, we bring the data, uh, we look at it in terms of what are the students strong in, what are universal errors, uh, what might we have to pre-teach in other classes, uh, and really use as uh, a way of examining the effectiveness of our uh, pedagogy, or our instruction in terms of their learning. Uh, so that is one critical part of of a formative assessment. And common ones uh, make it so that we have to collaborate, we have to agree on what they should learn, we agree on how we should measure it, uh, and we have these consistent measurements over time. Uh, but then there is, along with it, equally important impact in his new book, Dylan William actually said this is perhaps more important, uh, is the embedded formative assessment that we have every day. Okay. So I was in your classes, I saw a social studies class, I saw a math class, I saw an English class, and um, the teacher is giving responses for the students to make, uh, and then the question is, did you use that information? Did you adjust your instruction? Did you decide that you needed to firm that topic up, that you needed to go over it tomorrow? Could you go ahead? So that in the immediate time, every teacher should be doing embedded formative assessment, mm -hmm. uh, checking for understanding, but then responding to it. Uh, so I really, first of all, I commend your school. It's a beautiful school, well, a gorgeous you. school. Uh, and I would get all my 10,000 steps in <laughs> just walking around your campus. Uh, but um, the fact that the quality of instruction I saw was very, very high. Uh, and But using that embedded formative assessment to adjust your lesson at the moment. So using the common form is kind of a global when they're working with their department or, or grade right. level, subject level. This really would drill down to, uh, in the day-to-day, -day, formative assessments moment in your moment. classroom, moment to moment, to moment yep. um, planning. You know, I've, I've done all this work to plan a great lesson. How do I know when the students leave right. the room that they understood what well, we're trying to teach? Right? time of embedded form assessment, an exit ticket. Okay. Uh, I write down what they do. Uh, but... Um, uh, having them uh, do also uh, one of my focuses today on high schools is what's called retrieval practice where uh, you've t uh, taught maybe concepts in your social studies class on uh, a certain concept and then you say stand face your partner ones tell your partner as many things as you remember about that topic as possible mm -hmm. twos count the number of ideas then add to it uh, that is also a form of embedded formative assessment, but it contains retrieval practice. You have to retrieve from memory what I've taught you. And that's where learning occurs. It is the rehearsal, it is the retrieval that makes a difference. Well, I, I want to say thank you for spending time interviewing with me. I wish I could um, have gone to all 100 classes at this school site. They, uh, yeah. yeah, well, they're all as wonderful as you saw. So. Oh, they are. Excellent. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, but you do. And, you know, I just want to give you some compliments because I go to many high schools all across our nation and all across Australia. Uh, and uh, when I look out between classes or during classes, I see almost no children wandering around. They're in class. I didn't see any, not one child in the hallways who, uh, unless they were designated to work with like three other people on the steps, one case. Uh, so uh, the kids are in class. I walked by classes. The students were attending to the teacher, were engaged. Uh, you're doing 
remarkably well. Uh, so keep that up. The children deserve it and you deserve it because what you do creates the whole climate here uh, for your kids. So it was a real pleasure uh, to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time.